Classes started here in College Park earlier this week with almost 40,000 students registered for the fall semester, and they're all hoping for a return to glory. You know, Maryland hasn't won a national championship in football since the 1950s, but they have won 11 ACC titles. All right, let's go about 110 miles southwest of here to Charlottesville, Virginia, where they certainly hope for a return to glory. They have a brand new coach, and he's laying down the law. The expression, there's a new sheriff in town, isn't all that far-fetched when it comes to Mike London at the University of Virginia. So how I got here, I don't know, but it's like, that's how I got into coaching. London's journey to UVA has been anything but typical. He starred as a defensive back at the University of Richmond, graduating with a degree in sociology in 1983. He had a brief stint with the Dallas Cowboys, and then the real world came calling. So I became a police officer in the city of Richmond, and then shortly thereafter, a detective. Got in a life-threatening situation where I had a gun pulled on me that didn't go off. And uh, I decided at that time, you know what, I'm going to flip and go back to maybe being a coach. Following five years in Richmond Street Crimes Unit, London left the beat. And with the help of a former coach, he landed an assistant coaching job at his alma mater. Twelve years later, in 2001, London joined Al Groh's staff at Virginia. In 2008, he left for Richmond and his first head coaching job. That year, the Spiders won the football championship series national title. Less than a year later, London landed back at Virginia, replacing Al Groh. The 39th head coach in the history of UVA, and right now the most successful. You have absolutely no losses. What's it feel like? Is it hit home yet? I tell you, with the no losses, uh, I, I tell you, it's, uh, it's, it's been a surreal experience so far. The process since December has been one that's been accelerated. His top task, getting his players and coaches to believe. In Groh's nine seasons, Virginia went 59 and 53, making it to five bowl games. But the Cavaliers were just eight and 16 the last two years. How far away are you from where you need to be? I, I, I look at the, you know, people talk about glass half empty, half full. I look at it as the glass needs filling. You know, you need to, need to pour something into it. And it's not gonna be an, an overnight, instant, you know, instant thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's gonna take, you know, it's gonna take some recruiting classes and, and, and making sure that the players that are here understand that there's a level of expectation that I have of you on the field, in the classroom, and in the community. London is the father of seven. Three of his kids are adults now, with four little ones at home. And his priorities? Faith, family, and football. And, um, you know, I'm not one to sit around and reinvent, you know, the wheel or the forward pass. I mean, you know, I, I try to make sure that, uh, that people understand that, you know, it is a, it's a, it's a tough business, but uh, you can't lose sight of the fact that you still got to be a dad and, and, and a father and a husband and all those things. London is the first African-American head football coach in University of Virginia history. He is one of just 15 minority head coaches in college football's 120-team bowl subdivision. What does it mean to you to be one of those guys to stand up, to set the example, be out there, and opening that gate and banging that door down for others? Well, I mean, you know, first of all, it, it, it means a lot in that you have others that can champion your cause also. And so someone had to stand, you know, the Ty Willinghams and the Ron Dickersons, they had to stand and, 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 and take uh, the arrows you know, when they had those opportunities, because ultimately you're going to be judged by your win-loss record. But we all understand that the pink elephant in the room is is the color aspect of it. If I could be, you know, source of inspiration or model for someone else, you know, bring honor and integrity, you know, to this school and to my, my family name, then, then it's, it'll, it'll make it all worthwhile. The guy I'm looking forward to watching is Razai Dowling. The cover corner may be the best in the league. Dowling is a preseason All-American. He is on virtually every award watch list. He's out of Deep Creek High School in Chesapeake, Virginia. When we come back, I'll take you to Blacksburg, Virginia, and a look at the Virginia Tech Hokies. But as we go to break, let's go just across town to meet a future star from Howard University. There are two things to know about Willie Carter. One, he always smiles. I'm always happy. It could be cloudy days, I'm always happy. I don't have nothing to frown or pout about. I'm alive, so I'm just a happy person. And two, he'll be playing in the NFL someday. 
I just envision on a Sunday, Willie Carter on the catch, Willie Carter on the play. Carter is Howard's go-to receiver. He's coming off a super sophomore season with 46 catches, 630 yards, and five touchdowns. He's a kid that understands his talent. And uh, one of the mistakes our kids make is that when you have talent, and you understand what you have, a lot of times it doesn't go to waste. Carter's helmet is decorated, just like Willie himself. He is an all MEAC performer. It's good going against him in practice, though, because you ain't going to meet too many receivers his caliber. 6'3", 190 pounds, Carter has all the tools to make a run at the National Football League. I thought that's every college player goal to get in the draft. But all in due time. Talent-wise, athletically, uh, it wouldn't surprise me to hear his name being called. Uh, but again, you don't try to make the sandwich before you get the slices of bread and the peanut butter and jelly. Willie and the Bison open at Holy Cross tomorrow. Bison Express. You can jump on if you want to. Tickets free. Free.